So this is the time of year uh, when we see a lot of people complete their education at various levels. I'm going to brag on my own here for a minute. Lise and I, uh, my uh, lovely wife and I, we, we remember with happiness and pride the same day that many of you are experiencing uh, today uh, when each of our uh, children graduated. Paul, I remember that sunny day in San Diego when he uh, graduated from boot camp and was an official Marine. And then of course, Julia and Emily graduated, uh, she from Queens uh, University in South Carolina and Emily from here at Oklahoma Christian University. And of course, William from the Technical College in uh, Montreal, they kind of, they were all over the place. You know, we, we never actually had a chance to do what you're doing uh, this morning. Uh, so it's a, it's a wonderful uh, honor and a wonderful uh, moment. Of course, uh, right here in Choctaw, uh, many are graduating from uh, high school. Majority of the ones this morning are graduating from high school. I don't know about tech colleges. Uh, one is a graduate from the university. Uh, in our congregation, that's a marvelous and wonderful thing that we're, uh, that we're celebrating uh, together uh, this morning. And, and the season is a time for awards and ceremonies and speeches as we applaud those uh, who have persevered in their studies. They don't give you the diploma for enrolling. <laughs> they give you the diploma for finishing, you know? So it's a, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. And so uh, we're glad that you have persevered in the studies in order to achieve your educational goals. And uh, we will be presenting these uh, young uh, men and women uh, with the token of our appreciation that they uh, certainly uh, deserve and a token of our respect uh, for what they have accomplished. And we'll do that a little bit later on uh, with our elders. I'm not aware of any others uh, from our congregation who've also graduated, but if on the off chance we have missed you, I, I salute you for your achievement. And I encourage you to work just as hard to graduate from the School of Christian Life as you did from your regular school, because we all, we all need to graduate from the school of Christian life. In the same way that you, you leave your old school or your old colleges behind to go on to a new job or a new life, one day you will graduate from this physical life to inhabit a new dimension called heaven and undertake a new role as one who will reign with Christ at the right hand of God. We read in 2 Timothy 2, he says, Paul says, it's a trustworthy statement. When he says that, he's saying, take my word for it. You can bank on this. You can bank on this. For if we died with him, we will also live with him. If we endure, speaking of as we as Christians, if we endure, we will also reign with him, meaning we'll be in heaven with him. So just as in school, in order to graduate with honor, there are several requirements that you must have first. In the same way, in order to graduate from life with honor, there are several things that you must do. First of all, you must honor your parents. In Ephesians 6, verse one to three, Paul says, children obey your parents in the Lord, for that is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may live long uh, on the earth. Do you notice here that it doesn't say love your parents? It doesn't say agree with your parents. For those of you who are still children, dependent on your parents, the Bible says you must obey your parents so long as what they ask of you is not wrong, you must obey them. 
You cannot honor your parents without obeying your parents. To disobey them is to disobey God. And that is a serious sin. And God promises to punish those who, who disobey him. Note also that this passage says that if children obey, God personally will bless them. There's a promise here. You know, sometimes when things are not going well in, in your nine year old to 14 year old life and you're down in the dumps, you should check and make sure how well you're obeying your parents because it makes a whole lot of difference on how your life operates. Now, for those who are old enough to be independent or you're already married and you're gone from home, some people say, does this command have any effect on you? And the answer of course is yes. Again, notice that it says all should honor parents. No matter how old you are, they're still your parents. I can still remember the words of my mother, her voice, <laughs> when we were debating you know, the rightness of my behavior, even though I was 20 or 22 or something, and I was independent. And she would always have the winning argument at the end. And the argument was, but I'm your mother. <laughs> Don't you ever forget it, and, and I never did. Now, the commandment doesn't say you have to agree. The commandment doesn't say uh, do everything they say, because if you're an adult, the obedience part doesn't apply. And it doesn't say love. You know, it's easy to honor parents that we love, that we agree with that we see who have not hurt us, who have not disappointed us. But how do we honor those who don't fit that category? Well, whether we love them or not, whether we agree with them or not, whether we believe what they believe or not, we can still honor them in several ways. First of all, we can acknowledge that they exist. They gave us life. They did what they could. I often hear people disappointed in their parents, that their own parents didn't live up to this and they didn't give them that and whatever. And my answer to that always is, they gave you life. Your mom could have decided otherwise, but she chose to have you. Think about that. We can acknowledge that always, no matter what else happens. We can also live in such a way that our lives reflect honor upon our parents. People will honor them because of what they see in us. We can love them to the degree that they will allow us to love them. Isn't that the saddest thing in the world? having parents that don't allow you to love them as much as you want to love them. But honoring your parents means that you love them to the degree that they'll let you love them. And then of course, we can pray for them and pray for their needs. You cannot live honorably, I repeat to everyone, but especially to the young people here, you cannot live honorably without honoring your parents in some way. To dishonor them is to dishonor yourself and God's word, for it tells us we must do this thing. We must honor our parents because in doing so, we become better people. We become honorable people. To graduate with honor before God we must also honor yourselves. First Corinthians 6, 18 to 20 says, flee immorality. Every, when in, in the Bible, immorality refers to a lot of things, but in this particular passage, 
uh, he uses the term immorality for sexual immorality in particular, okay? So he says, flee immorality. Every other sin, meaning stealing, lying, cheating, whatever, every other sin that a man commits is outside the body. But the immoral man, meaning the sexually immoral man or woman, sins against his or her own body. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you have been bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body. You know, the, the popular thinking today is that your body is your own. Oh, I see it all the time. People marching in the streets, you know, especially on women's issues, carrying signs. My body, my choice, you know, my life, my body. It's always that idea of this is my body. I get to do what I want with my body. Nobody tells me what to do with my body. I can pierce it. I can draw pictures of evil creatures on it if I want to. I can pour alcohol and tobacco and illegal drugs into it. I can use it for sexual pleasure with anybody that I choose. I can kill a baby within it if I want to. I can even destroy it if I'm tired of living. But the truth of the matter that Paul explains is that the body that your spirit inhabits was given to you by God and both your spirit and your body belong to God. They don't belong to you. You use your body, but you don't own it. God owns it. You have the freedom to disobey him concerning its use, but not without consequences. Always ask yourselves if what you're about to do will honor or dishonor your own body. Remember, you cannot obtain the new glorified body that will enable you to live with God in heaven forever unless you honor the body that God has given you to live uh, with here uh, on, the, on the earth. And so honor your body at all costs, in all situations, ask yourself always the question, am I honoring my own body in doing this thing? And then finally, and of course, graduating with honor before God requires that you honor your Lord. In Matthew 10, 32, Jesus says, therefore everyone who confesses me before men, I will also confess him before my Father who is in heaven. The more education you receive, the greater the opportunities that the world will provide you. A better standard of living is usually the reward for making an effort in school. This is fine so long as a better standard of living is not the standard by which you live your life. When Jesus spoke of uh, confessing his name, he didn't just mean the confession of faith that one makes before baptism. You know, those of you who have been baptized, you understand what I'm saying. Before you were immersed in the water, someone, your preacher, your father, somebody said to you, do you believe that Jesus is the son of God? And you answered publicly, well, yes, I do. And then you were baptized. This is not what he's talking about here. He meant, he meant uh, that one's life and one's pursuits and one's standards would be a reflection and a confession of his name. Uh, getting rich is okay, nothing wrong with that. Getting ahead is okay. You know, there are lots of successful educated people in the Bible, Solomon, Isaiah, Paul, Lydia, all these and more were educated, wealthy people. But when getting rich and getting ahead is what you're about, what others see when they look at you, then what you're confessing is your standard of living, not Christ. Honoring Christ requires faithfulness to his teaching which is the Bible, 
faithfulness to his people, which are the church, faithfulness to his promise. If we remain faithful to him to the end, we will be saved. And so honor your Lord with your education by putting your talents to work for him, not just yourselves. You know, on college diplomas, they have a way of honoring those students who have graduated with high cumulative GPAs. There's a small golden stamp that will say in Latin, one of three things. It'll say either cum laude, which means with honor, and that goes as far as I can determine nowadays uh, to those who have a 3.5 to 3.7 GPA. Or you'll have a little sticker that'll say magna cum laude, meaning with great honor. That's for 3.8 to 3.9 GPAs. And then there's another sticker that says summa cum laude which means with greatest honor. And that's for 3.96 to four plus GPAs. Now those who graduate before God with honor also have a stamp, but the stamp is on their foreheads and it has two names, the name of the father and the name of the son. We read about this in Revelation chapter 14, verse one. It says, then I looked and behold, the lamb was standing on Mount Zion and with him 144,000. The lamb of course is Jesus, Mount Zion's a way of saying Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem. And with him 144,000 representing, that represents the church, Christians having his name and the name of his father written on their foreheads. Now that stamp is worn only by those who have confessed the name of the son, Jesus Christ before the father and have been baptized for the forgiveness of sins in order to receive the Holy Spirit. We read about that in Acts chapter two, where Peter says to the crowd, Repent and each of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In this way, they have the Father, they have the Son and the Holy Spirit and receive the stamp that makes them and marks them as ones who have graduated with honor before God. As I close out my brief lesson this morning, I ask, do you have this stamp? No matter what's on your high school or college diploma, I want to know which stamp you have on your forehead because no school can give it. It is received by faithful obedience to the gospel. And so uh, whether you are young or old, uh, whether you are graduating or you're a high school dropout, you can graduate with honor before God and even today and guarantee an eternal future for yourself in heaven. And so I encourage you to continue with your education, but I exhort you to graduate before the Lord today by coming forward for repentance and baptism uh, to be restored to a right relationship with your Lord Jesus or for prayer or identification with this a congregation. Whatever your need might be, we encourage you to come now for that as we stand and as we sing our song of encouragement.